I'll spare you. There will be no singing today. So. <laughs> So today we're going to be talking about the iris. So as a medical student, the iris is often your favorite structure to look at. Not only is it beautiful, very well pigmented, but it's often really the only structure that you can find on a slit lamp exam. So unfortunately, there's often not a lot of pathology with the iris. And when there is, it's often pretty benign. However, occasionally, this beautiful structure of the iris can turn deadly if there's not close monitoring. So we, we have a case today. So the 13-year-old boy with a history of congenital sector iris melanocytosis presents with a new pigmented and elevated lesion on his right iris near the irido corneal angle. First noticed this lesion about six months ago, and since then, it has not really grown. So his exam, his visual acuity was 20-20, and his intraocular <coughs> pressure was normal. So here you can see that this is an external photograph of the eye. Notice the, the darkly pigmented melanocytosis with peripherally there is this new growth supranasally. So here, here is an another view of the lesion and I've highlighted it in, uh, in black here. Notice this new growth here on this portion of the iris. Here is a close-up uh, view of the, the iris uh, melanocytosis and the growth uh, proceeding growth proceeding here. Here we see that this is a gonioscopy view looking at the angle of the iris here and I've outlined here the growth. Con concern here is you want to look for seeding. You want to look for any types of seeds in this portion of the angle for that would be highly indicative of um, a melanoma. Here it, you, if you look at the growth you notice the intrinsic vascularity of this growth. Zooming in on this you can get a close view of the growth and also the anterior chamber. Notice that there's no seeding on the iris or the anterior chamber. And also here you can notice, zooming in, that you see that there are, there are no prominent feeder vessels uh, growing right into this growth. So this is an anterior chamber HCT. And just to review a little bit, here is some anatomy. And what we'll be focusing on right here is going to be the iris. So here is, here is this patient's anterior OCT. And I've highlighted the lesion here. And it showed that it was a 0.5 millimeter depth lesion by about a 3.5 millimeter in width growth. So the big question, is this an iris nevus? Is this an iris melanoma? And that's the big question that I want to tackle today. So the reason is, if you look here on the left, how do we know the difference between an iris nevus here on the left, which in only four years transformed into a melanoma? Or in this one, the nevus on the left here, in only two years formed into a melanoma. So first, some background. Uh, Dr. Carol Shield at Will's Eye Institute looked at about 4,000 iris lesions over about a 35-year period and categorized as to what their etiology was. They found that about a quarter of these lesions in children ended up being iris ne nevi. And then in middle-aged and senior adults, almost half of the lesions were iris nevi, showing that the most common lesion you're going to find on the iris is going to be an ir iris ne nevi. Of note, middle-aged in their study was categorized as 41 to 60, just in case you're wondering if you made the cut or not. So looking at the rates of transition of nevi that are already found on the iris that will transition to melanoma, in a study by Torito et al., they found that 5% of iris nevi eventually transformed into melanoma after five years. Additionally, a study by Shields <coughs> found that after 15 years, 8% of these original nevi eventually transition into melanoma. So the iris is part of the, the uvea structure, <coughs> which if you look at the breakdown of the different malignancies, choroidal melanoma is going to be the most common <coughs> form of uvea melanoma, and iris melanoma is actually going to be the least common. So if you have an iris melanoma, why is it so important to catch it early? <coughs> The reason is because with an increase of one millimeter depth of iris melanoma, you have an increased rate of metastasis by five years. So this is a pictorial illustration of iris melanoma and the rate at which they will metastasize after a certain period of time. So after five years, 
Dr. Shields and her colleagues found that 3% of melanoma would eventually metastasize. After 10 years, 5% of these melanoma would metastasize. And after 20 years, 10% of these melanoma would eventually metastasize and become systemic. So how do we, cat how do we identify iris melanoma? So if you remember back to medical school, we had this handy dandy mnemonic of skin melanoma with the ABCD mnemonic. Additionally, uh, Dr. Shields and her colleagues came up with a similar mnemonic, but specifically for iris melanoma. This has been known as the ABCDEF, which we will be going through specifically today. So A is for age, young. So <coughs> iris neva that were found in patients age 40 years or less showed a 3%, or not a 3%, were three times more likely to become a melanoma than those that in older individuals. Uh, B is for blood. So a single episode of IHEMA was associated with nine times increase of chance of that iris nevi, nevus becoming melanoma. C is for clock hour in inferior. Specifically, this is referring to about the sectors of four o'clock to nine o'clock on the distribution of the iris. And you can see the distribution here, and if the original nevus occurred in this portion of the iris. It was associated with a nine times greater chance of becoming a melanoma. D is for diffuse, or involving the entire surface of the iris. Nevi that met this criteria were 14 times more likely to become a melanoma. E is for ectropion. So ectropion nevii <coughs> is the posterior pigmented portion of the iris that is folding forward through, through the pupil, often being dragged by the melanoma itself. If you note here on this, if you note the melanoma in the lower inferior portion, it's pulling the posterior portion of the iris forward, forming this ectropion nevi. F, and lastly, is for feathery margin. So this is referring to the geographic tumor margin of the original nevus, associated with three times increased risk of becoming melanoma. So if you note here, this nevus in, in the bottom, I've outlined these feathery kind of fanning out borders here. Additional markers, which are indicative of a nevus that would be at risk for becoming a melanoma or a melanoma itself, are seeding both on the iris itself and in the, um, the angle, feeder vessels, nodule formation, and also intrinsic vascularity. So in conclusion, iris nevi are the most common iris lesion that you are gonna see statistically. Additionally, the rate of their transition from benign to malignant is relatively small, about 5% after five years, and about 8% 8, 8 after 15 years. If we look at our patient and going through this ABCDEF criteria, he didn't meet very many of these, only meeting one for being a young age, and also an ancillary criteria of intrinsic vascularity. As such, he was diagnosed with a benign iris nevus, with a low, uh, a low potential for transition into melanoma. He was eventually followed over the next couple years and they noticed minimal growth and no seeding of, uh, of this nevus. As such, the patient and the family was, was comforted that this would be a benign process. So I, my hope as we have gone through this today is as, as we see these lesions, as we see um, iris nevus in the clinic, that by applying this criteria of the ABCDEF, we can be both more confident and more accurate in differentiating between iris, iris nevi and iris melanoma. Thank you. So in terms of the angle, that's a really highly risky area for tumor for growth. Um, I didn't read specific numbers in terms of how much increased risk you are at to have a nevus that's growing near the angle, but that's one of the reasons that you have to do gonioscopy very frequently to see how close um, that growth is becoming to the angle. So, so, great so question. that's really yeah. an important 
make the cut. But surgically, I mean, if it's out of the out of the normal, I think the knee is an unusual one. Once you put it in the normal, it's usually pretty tough to do a local resection. And that's why that's really scary. You look at this particular one, uh, and, and you're looking more at thickness to maybe change it, and it's likely to be in the number. So once it once it does, it will transfer spontaneously. I mean, this this is a very high Yeah, exactly. And I, I looked Nobody into. Has an yep. For that. This is this is uh -huh. one of those statistical things. Yeah, it's possible. Well, 